Hello. Can you believe it? The heck are you? Um, I'm still in my apartment. (laughs) Not this again. Episode 489 and she is still in her apartment. uh Uh-huh. But now everybody's involved. The 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 health department. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. The L.A. Housing, the Board of Housing. This has escalated. Oh, I have taken it up the chain. Also... Uh, on recommendation of wonderful people out there, including Brainiacs, I got my house tested for mold. Off the charts. No. What Susie, do you do? Like, how do you get it tested? I had a mold company, a, a mold and like water damage company, paid for them to come out out of pocket because my apartment sure as hell isn't doing anything like that. Wow. Had them come out, swab the areas, like do a test with this machine that measures the w- moisture content. 100% moisture content no. in the wood, in the doors. Oh and God. then they tested the swabs, came back, and it, it says uh, it's on a scale of one to four, one being like nothing, and four being this is some serious shit. Four plus is what ours Jesus came back Christ. as. In the worst kind of mold. No. So, and then uh, we realize, put two and two together and the guy starts asking, so have you experienced any sort of like respiratory issues right. or allergies or stuff like that? Or like, and you're like, and yeah, like, I thought I had yes. COVID. Yes, exactly. Susie, exactly. Wow. I went out and got the COVID test and I, they were like, no, negative. I'm like, why do I have a <clears throat> sore throat? Why do I have like my chest is like hurting. Why do I have, you know, you name it, like all the other stuff, except the fever, except, you know, I wasn't ever right. getting a fever. I was mm-hmm. just feeling like, well, sh- don't you know? So Ren went to the allergist, we went to the doctor, and now Bo's going to the vet next week to get <laughs> oh herself God. tested for mold because all of us are sick. That so is now awful. it's I a hope whole you thing. Take them to the cleaners. I am, yeah. And. Oh, oh gosh oh my god i'm getting all worked up it's all my, right. my blood rate or heart rate or whatever this is what <laughs> i hate that i that i have to go to these extremes right you know right yes i feel your it's pain just, it's like, awful it's just is like and and i can't help but be reminded of the pain of um what do you want to call it? I'm trying to think of like how Johnny, the decision Johnny made in that yes. uh, Rivals 3. Like, mm-hmm. you know, I the feeling of injustice, injustice is one that I just, I'm not going to sit with. And maybe I just have too much free time on my hands or like <laughs> because I can't go outside and do anything and I'm trapped in this apartment, I don't want to go outside and do anything because, you know, I would like to keep people alive. Um, I got a lot of free time to become like a, you know, like part-time paralegal or (laughs) whatever, which I feel like I am. So, yeah, I got to, it's been a real. I hope all this has a happy ending. Me too. At the very least, some allergy medication. (laughs) At the very least. Yes. By the way. I've been meaning to update you about my ghost. <gasps> Susie! <laughs> oh, tell me! Oh I mean, my gosh, I have so much to talk to you about on this subject, too. Oh, good. Okay. No, yeah. I mean, I, it's just, I live in a haunted house, period. Period! Oh my God. Guys, you you heard it here. What, mark the date and time. <laughs> Write it down. Susie, full believer. I mean, I don't want to believe. I th- I think it's ridiculous. But you're like the opposite of me. You have the opposite. <laughs> I have the I have the the Fox Mulder poster that says I want to believe, Fox and it has the pictures of of aliens. And Susie's has a picture of like I don't know, whatever the opposite of that shit is. With <laughs> something that says I do not want to believe. A no. big cross line through it. Mm. Oh, that's so funny. I okay, so tell like- me, tell me. I mean, it is fun, like the metaphysical stuff, but in actuality, I was always like, that's bullshit. But I don't know how to explain what's happening. Such things as like, I turn off the light to come up to bed and it just Mm -hmm. comes right back on over and over again. A switch. And I'll be like, Adam, we definitely live in a haunted house. He's like, yeah, that light switch is just sticky. I'm like, yeah, because there's a ghost finger on it. (laughs) 
what does Lincoln say? This is okay because we need to update everybody because I don't think they. Yeah, we didn't do the update. We didn't do the update because they didn't. Oh, Susie, this is so exciting. So, <laughs> if you remember back a few episodes, probably like ten or ten or twelve now, maybe. Mm-hmm. And Susie was sharing how Adam <laughs> saw a ghost. Right. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Adam saw a ghost. And I said, well, you know what you have to do. Well, I didn't even say you have to ask. I said, Lincoln will tell you. Right. My words on yeah. the podcast. Right. Recorded. Right. So that night at dinner, yes. <laughs> Adam was like, how did the recording go? I was like, oh, I was talking about the ghost. And Lincoln goes, oh, you mean the one that lives here? <laughs> oh, and I was like, look what do you go mean? On. And he yes. was like, the lady that lives here. The lady. Mm-hmm. Look at how he... You didn't even tell me that part, Susie. I'm yeah. so glad you didn't because I can get worked up right now. <laughs> Look at how he knew it was... Listen, I don't even believe in... Like, I do, yeah. but I question it. But I just get really excited because I want to believe. It's fun. The unexplained is fun. Susie. Whatever okay, it is. Okay, so have you had any other sightings? No other sightings, just weird activity. And I feel like okay. whoever it is is benevolent. I don't fear for my life or yeah. anything. Yeah, she's very, she's, she seems, from what you're telling me, like, very nice. Maybe a prankster. Lonely. Oh. She wants attention. So maybe. maybe, okay, okay. You know what? Maybe, like, ask her, uh, you want, do you, are you interested in talking to her? I mean, sure, if you think I should. Like, maybe... I feel like Adam would be into this. He's already doing it. I'm like, get Adam. He like, talks go, to her all the time. Okay, see? There you go. This is great. So, f- maybe, like, setting up an area of the house that can be hers. Oh, my God. Maybe that'll help contain her. Like, what do you like to do? Like, you like you like to read? You like to... Maybe she likes music. Look at she nice can, things? Yeah, okay. Yeah. She could go where And we so, play. maybe... Yeah, because if you if you're if she's like bugging you and like doing stuff to get attention, maybe you just gotta like give her some or something. What do you think the percentages of people who genuinely believe in ghosts? Like oh if we did a God. poll, like genuine. Because here's, oh, I don't even know what I would answer to that. Okay. Because here I am telling you to talk to your, <laughs> but like I am, I know. I don't know what I know. And do you, but I if have you think watched, they exist, do you think yeah. that there are people that used to be alive and now they're dead? Or do you think they're just like beings or something like angels? I think of? that it is that, that there are energies. Like, have you seen the movie Inception? No, you haven't. <laughs> oh, for Pete's sake. No, I have seen that movie. Did you see Inception? Yeah, yeah, I saw that you one. Finally I haven't did. seen Interstellar. That's the no, one. I mean that's what I meant. Interstellar. Oh. <laughs> God damn it! I'm equally as worked up. Okay, I, I go back to my original reaction. <laughs> that have you seen Interstellar? No. no, that is that will help. I think that th- does the best job of connecting the science with the spiritual, the, with the supernatural. Okay, because I think that we. I take a look at, at the more I studied quantum physics and the more I looked at things on a very small, like the smallest way we can. You know what, Sarah, it reminds me of that thing you talked about a long time ago about how we think that our brains are providing us with all the information around us Mm -hmm. and sensing everything that's there. But then Mm -hmm. that story about um, the tribes that don't have the word for blue and then mm-hmm. they can't see blue. Like if you give them a a, a rainbow, they can only mm-hmm. see the colors that they have names for. Mm-hmm. And how Ooh, our language is I get in- goosebumps <laughs> as you talk about this. <laughs> our language is inadequate in some yes. ways. And it prevents us from actually seeing the totality of the world around us. So that could include things like ghosts and other weird beings. One hundred percent. There you go. <laughs> yes. We they there are so many stories about this. Mm-hmm. There's the story about the uh uh like 
medicine man or shaman who, who in the you know uh, indigenous people who didn't weren't able to see the boats of exactly know, who, right of Christopher Columbus wherever and. <laughs> Like, I don't even know a family. Whoever, whatever colonizer Explorers, was coming yes. in to fuck shit up like they do. It's another story. <laughs> they, uh, had, they weren't even They had no word for that. mediocre white man. They didn't even have that word. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, this is my favorite episode. Uh, they didn't even have that. And so it, it was, it, it was uh, uh, inviting in possibility, opening up the mind to something else saying i don't know but let me think outside of my uh realm of experience yeah my and and or the known world or whatever. the known world Ooh, god i love that even more yes <laughs> and as soon as you do that i feel like the information comes in in a weird mm. way and like so when you look at like quantum physics and things, you know, and like string theory that says like we're in, oh my gosh, and the time was exactly at eleven eleven when I said that. Make so, like, a wish. <laughs> um, but when, uh, uh, you know, if we are happening in different dimensions or things are existing in some different way, and, and energy is is existing in these different planes that we we can't even see, like. What is matter even? I mean, you know, they say like this desk that I'm on is like, yeah, it's like a desk, but it's mostly not stuff. Mm-hmm. It's the space in between. So what the heck? How, we don't know anything. So I think that if you, here's what we know. We know energy can be, it cannot, it, it, energy isn't created or destroyed. It like exists, yeah. you know, like, it, like it's there. So the energy needs to go somewhere. It needs to, uh, to, to you know it goes somewhere it's something i just think it tra- it it is not in a physical body this vessel that we call you know a person mm-hmm. and it's something else i don't know what that is but i like not knowing and i'll tell you there's this new show that i resisted for like a million years called surviving death on netflix mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. holy crap it's great, isn't it? Did you see it? I watched we the first two episodes. And then I didn't like it because it moved towards more medium stuff. Susie, that school that they show in there, my mom went to. I thought she might. That's her school that she calls Hogwarts for yes, humans for psychics or whatever, or for psychics. Yeah. She went there and I was like, mom, did you ever see a seance? And she goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, what? Right. It's like nothing for her. Mm-hmm. And there it is so that movie, that show, oh, but you see, you missed the best episode because the best episode is episode four and five. Wait, why? What are those about? Oh my gosh. It's called Signs from the Dead. Okay. And it's all people and it's oh so you know my one of your favorite stories and my favorite stories about my grandma and the bird and showing mm-hmm. up in my house. They're all stories like that. Okay. About and then people that. who totally resisted, who were oh my god, I got, it's so unbelievable, Susie. You have to watch it. Like there's a couple who had a son that passed away, and these are very logical, science driven people. I think they are in research or in science, and the way that they talk, like this mom is like, I don't believe anything, and the the. The things that happen to them are so magical and unexplainable and like it happened to one parent and then, and we're talking like, I don't even want to spoil it for you because it's so good, Okay, but you just have to see it because I love when people who are very resistant and very like, like, nope, this isn't a thing. Right. Don't be silly. Basically bitch slapped by, (laughs) you know, the universe of like, nope, you can't say that. Here's the proof. And it's like, so, uh, (laughs) I love it. Cause like, I don't know. It just feels like when you have an experience like that with somebody, a loved one, your own experience with that, 
it is true and you know it to be in a way that's not just like I think. It's yeah. I know. Mm-hmm. And that knowing is such a ooh, it's such a good feeling. Yeah. I just find that's it like nice to be for, open knowing. to it. Yeah. You know, it's fun to think, well, we don't have the all the answers and yeah. who knows what what exists beyond our yeah. understanding. That's fun. Yeah, it's so fun. And, like, I feel like my grandma really does, like, hang out. Like, I can, you know, and I didn't even think about this. I had never thought about this before. But in the show, they say that um, signs from the dead, sometimes it appears for people like a smell. Like, you can smell them and you Mm -hmm. can't get it out of your head. Well, I've had that where I'm like... You've told me that. Yes. And I always thought it was that I used like a bar of soap or something, but it's like (laughs) more than that. Or like I ate something that my grandma... Like, and as soon... I I got like chills down my spine when I put that together, where it was... But like comfort, warm, good ones, where it was just like, oh, that is grandma in a weird way. And doesn't it feel good? Do you feel like your grandma would love monk bars? Well, I know I love monk bars. <laughs> Susie, I was I I was like kind of doubting you about the coconut one because I was oh like, how freaking good can this be? And I don't know why I slept on it. Here's why. Because that <laughs> one doesn't come. I'm like going to tell you my whole story about my afternoon now. So I liked the one. I like when they come in the clear packaging because like you can see yeah, the delicious in there. Yeah. nuts and chocolates and all the good stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I just like usually go for those first because it, I feel like it's like, um you know, like those cards that you like unwrap and you're like, oh, I didn't even get any special ones. But <laughs> this one was not like that. So I had not eaten the coconut one. It is like a delicious coconut macaroon. Is that mm-hmm. what they're called? Yes. It tastes like I'm eating dessert. Like this is dessert. Right. And that's why and I, I couldn't keto, believe it. And only... I didn't even know that. Right. <laughs> that's why I couldn't believe it only had one gram of sugar. And I, I get it. so mad when I love something a lot and I feel like I can't explain it to the brainiacs good enough. Like mm-hmm. I'm Don't telling worry, I got you. you. The, yeah, you can do it. They're so good and they're so yeah, great for are. breakfast. Lincoln has asked for them probably a dozen times. And then yeah. I like wouldn't let him eat the coconut ones because I wanted them. Well, that's smart. Right. And so I just bought a, a whole box of them. Oh, but that's smart. We solved the problem. Yeah. But they're great I was going to say, there's only two in that variety pack. You've got to do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah, right. Sorry, Link. Get your own. <laughs> right. No vacancy. And like... They're just great for a late night treat or if you've had an edible, like, you know, some oh, of us yeah. do. Yeah, like some of us. Uh, just try it for yes. yourself. You'll that see. That is a safe munchie. It is a safe and munchie. And it gives you the crunch crunch factor that you like. With it's it. very okay. satisfying. And we smart, have a special smart, deal smart. for you guys. Get 20% off your first purchase of any Monk Pack product by visiting monkpack.com and entering our code CANDY at checkout. Oh, I looked... I was looking at the ingredients, and they have monk fruit, which is why it's called oh, that. Anyway, which is the sweet thing that makes it sweet, right? And Monk Pack oh. is so confident in their product, it's back to the one hundred percent satisfaction guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll exchange the product or refund your money, whichever you prefer. To get started, just go to monkpack dot com. That's M U N K P A C K dot com. Select any product, then you use our code CANDY at checkout to save 20% off your purchase. Monk Pack, delicious, nutritious food you can count on. Thank them mm. for sponsoring our show. Mm-mm-mm. I think I'll treat myself to one of those later. Yeah, right? A little boost, a little yeah. something, something. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Anyway. Hmm. Okay, <clears throat> let me what think. Else? What Yes, what did I want to talk What's to you about today? What's on the agenda? Today? So, um, oh, so I have been telling everybody about... Um, this shortage of sperm thing yeah. that we talked about that mm-hmm. I just can't get over because it seems like, you know, I had, I, and this is what I thought. So I thought that there was going to be a baby boom. I know. That is not the case. Right. What the heck? You it's know the what? opposite. When I saw, I saw a tweet about it and it made sense. It was like, well, yeah, there's not been a baby boom as we've been sat at home thinking about how none of us have good health care and can't oh afford God. and women have to quit work. Like <sighs> once they put it that way, I was like, yeah, right. We're not breeding in wow. that mindset. It's, 
It's, did you hear the number that it's estimated that like the decline in births that's going to be no. like next year? A, a half a million. It's going down. Yes. Wow. A half a million fewer births next year. Wow. Which is v- very, I, you know, would that, I don't know if it puts us on a population decline Like a decline, or whatever. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that happened to Japan. Right, and they got real upset about it. Yes, it was, and like the ratio of men to women was, right. it, whew, that's, but I, mean, but like, I really do feel like people are, it, it's just crazy to me that you have a, a shortage of sperm. Right. And a, it's like the people who want to have babies can't have babies. Don't you feel like all the wrong people are having them? <laughs> this is that fucking movie. Um, oh, uh, that movie. Oh gosh. Everybody's screaming it. It's the one that in the future and everybody puts cool, uh, Gatorade on their plants because it says it has electrolyte uh, in. Oh. I don't oh know my that God. one. It's so good. It's like it's a joke, but it's also now fucking accurate. Idiocracy. Okay. Which also sounds like Interstellar, which also sounds <laughs> like Inception. So it is fair that I confused those for yeah. everybody who's just going, go oh my gosh, Sarah can't. Just see them all. They're, they're all good. So yes, but that movie is all about like a guy who like wakes up in the future where um, it, it explains, it's, it's this. It's like the, the people who uh, said, you know, I, I'm going to... D- have kids after I get my master's degree yep. and after I open my own business and da da da. And then by the time they do that, they can't have kids and they're struggling with infertility. And then it's like the, the, um, you know, like white trash, you know, hillbillies who are like, uh, well, I can say that because, you know, Susie, my best friend, is white we come trash. from a long line, <laughs> right? It's the family business. Yeah. So, uh, uh, <laughs> Yeah, so and then they're having like eight children and 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 then, you know, the the president ends up being some like I don't know, guy who's essentially like uh uh what what's that jo- like Joe Rogan and Trump in one or something oh, like that God. and probably and then um <coughs> everybody starts watering their plants with Gatorade because it has electrolytes and all they know in the future is that electrolytes are good for you and then it what? ends up killing all their crops My and God. so like it's like and they're the favorite TV show is like ouch you hit my balls or something where you just like <laughs> people it's just like a video a, a repeat of people getting kicked in the nuts this is essentially the world we are living in right that sounds with just like a little right less now. Gatorade but like not really because it's, it, we're just covering things with pesticides and oh, doing like um what are they called uh the big crops the yeah um, right you call them crop dusters or whatever mono, oh, wait, no those, chemtrails like when they, when you do um like like all one crop in oh yeah that makes and me it sad. wipes out the bees and like all the stuff there's a name for that too i'm like forgetting all of my important who words cares today, so. whatever who cares whatever i can't some. believe we're still doing this <laughs> oh i mean there's a lot to talk about Susie. Well, yeah i'm nowhere near done oh my gosh so yes that was um <clears throat> One of the things that I wanted to update you on, you know, of like, just like, I can't believe that there's that. It is weird though, that there would be a sperm different. shortage and a baby bust yeah. at the same time. But it makes sense that people aren't going to sperm banks to donate during the pandemic because they don't rather not go to a doctor's office and things like yeah. that. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And, you know, I like in sharing that with everybody, my mom was like, well, you know why they do that? And I was like, yes, mom, I know. She goes, so everybody doesn't start dating and they don't start becoming weird. It was basically like exactly my answer. Wait, that do I what? The, the, why they limit the sperm bank, like the, the people who can donate. Like you can only donate so many times. And What's the reason? Oh, we t- I thought we talked about this. Or maybe what? I just do that in my head. That what? if you have the same guys, like some, maybe sometimes I like replay the episodes and then think no. we have these conversations. <laughs> no, I'm but not. Like when, I just probably forgot. When you, like the, like the same guy can't be the only one donating oh, yeah, because they if everybody right. in the yes. town has the same daddy might have some trouble oh, a few right. generations down the line that suddenly makes more sense than it did the first time we talked about it yeah 
My mom explaining things does have it. <laughs> She's good at that. <laughs> she is good at that. Uh, so, okay, what else do I want to talk about? I wanted to talk to you about that amazing TV show, um, uh, uh, Surviving, Surviving Death. Death. Um, and then on the completely opposite end of the spectrum, mm-hmm. another Netflix show that, oh, my God, is the stinking cutest. <laughs> um, the same people or the same production company that does Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, yeah, uh, does this one called Say I Do, oh, where they okay. throw a surprise wedding. Oh my god! Tell me about Are it. These the cutest stories you've ever heard in your gosh darn life. I love love. It is so. It's like we need things that remind us of the joy and remind us of. You know, I just love that shit right now. It's like the Good News Network stuff. <laughs> and so this show takes a couple that um, have had some sort of uh, uh, challenges or difficulties or, or have just been through some shit that prevented them from getting married or prevented them from having like, you know, um, the first couple they did, they got married, but their wedding was like an actual nightmare disaster the, the it literally caught on fire and they had to be oh evacuated and like it couldn't have gone worse it was so bad and it, and the stories are just so amazing and people are so deserving and you just hear you know and it's it's well i've only i think it's only been straight couples that i've seen so far i've only seen two episodes but it oh my god Ugly crying tears of joy, Susie. Oh my gosh! So they if, don't know that they're going to be surprised. Yes, with the this wife wedding. does it. The woman doesn't. She doesn't oh. know. She and and often they're not engaged yet. I mean, in the first one they had a wedding and then it was an awful wedding. But from there on out, it's all people who are you know not engaged yet. So what? they have the engagement and then they have this amazing wedding. And wait oh a minute! My gosh. What? Well, the in the heck? ones I've seen, they weren't engaged yet. Like, like one. Oh my god. Well, I'll just tell you. Then <laughs> in one, because it's just so sweet. So this couple had plans to get married. They had been together for I think two years, and you know he was like, "I'm gonna as soon as we have you know money for me to get you the wedding ring of uh, that you want and all this stuff." Uh, which, by the way, who, I feel like who cares about that? The wedding. The wedding ring. Like, who cares about... Oh, right. The, like, who cares about being, all of it, really? Frick, who cares about all of it? Like, I, th- I, the symbol is so much more important, mm-hmm. you know? It's like, I feel like you can have a, one of those, like, rings out of the freaking toy machine. And well, we've if really that's bought the symbol, into, like, the... Yes, marketing. it's so dumb. Yeah. Like, that... And Big you're supposed wedding. To, oh, this is... Oh, and you have to spend, like, three times... Fuck that! Mm-hmm. No, you don't. For what? <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, that's not the point. So, if the you point get is, married again, what are you going to do? If I get married again, what am I going to do? Yeah, well, like I want to get. I definitely want to get married again. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, like? Would you have what am any I kind of do ceremony for, or anything? Oh yeah, for mm-hmm. sure. Okay. I definitely want a ceremony. I love celebrating love. Yeah. I just don't like the expectation of it being. Like, I don't think anybody should should do something that puts them in a financially right. difficult place. Like the I consumerism side of it. The consumerism side. I think celebrating love is the most amazing thing in the whole wide world. Yeah, and I want to do that, that all day, every day. And that's why I love these stinking shows. But uh, uh, yeah. And, and there were definitely pictures of a wedding on my vision board that I made. Oh, really? Yeah. That's nice, Sarah. Oh, Suze, you're so sweet. God. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're going to make me cry. What? I love that reaction. Oh, I just didn't. I Because I saw you were making a vision board, and I always imagine yes. what you're putting on there, but I didn't oh, think of that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, of course I do that. I want that. That's yeah. nice. Well, I figure, I mean, you're like, uh, I, I feel like quarantine years are kind of like dog years, where like yes. one year is like seven. Totally. So it's like, uh, you're pretty sure. It, like, I'm like, okay, whatever. yeah, I'm. This is, I'm going to be with you forever. The end. That's lovely. So. Where is this? At your house? Do you have it? Yes, I do. Okay. I'll take a picture and show you. What else is on there? I'm not done with this Um, conversation. Oh, I love this combo. (laughs) You know what? It's funny because like when you make it, 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 
I don't go in with the intention of like, this is what I want to have on there. It's more like I'm looking through a magazine. I'm looking through a bunch of magazines. I'm trying to find, look at pictures that feel like what I want to bring into my life, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And whatever kind of comes from that comes from that. When I was done, it was all pictures of nature. It was just nature, Mm -hmm. outdoors. It was um, about like uh, uh, turning it from a house to a home kind of thing. And then about a lot about um, like getting outside and 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 like time out, taking a time out in nature and outdoors and living, living Mm -hmm. and like pictures of skiing and pictures of, you know. And I was luckily able to find a good selection of uh, uh, biracial couples. Oh, that's so, so which nice. I, you know, because that really does Makes change. That I didn't want to put on my. I want like I want something that looks like, you know, us and like looks mm-hmm. like I like that. And so it it I was like yeah. When we first sat down to do these vision boards, Ren and I did like two year no, a year ago or so um, uh, to do another vision board. That was one of the problems we ran into. It was like, well, we need to go out and get some new magazines because none of the, yeah. these are just a bunch of white people and they look, <clears throat> this is like, I want this. So It seems like that's yes. improving. Yes. Well, another thing we love around here besides love is feeling safe and sound, which sometimes it can be hard to do when you're a lady wandering about town. And now there's a new product that can help you feel a little safer. It's called She's Birdie. Like when you're leaving the house now and you're like, do I have my phone, my keys, my mask, my wallet? Now you can say, do I have my She's Birdie? Because it's super easy to carry. It's a personal safety alarm designed to be easy to carry and simple to use. So like if the bad guys are coming for you, you can pull the alarm and it will emit a loud 130 decibel siren and flashing strobe lights to help deter an attack. And can give you some peace of mind when you're out and about. And it's no danger to you. Like pepper spray and stuff, that can be such a pain and problematic for the person trying to feel safer. So She's Birdie is such a better option and you can use it without worry. Right now, She's Birdie is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase when you go to she'sbirdie.com and use promo code BRAINCANDY. Go to She's Birdie, spelled S-H-E-S-B-I-R-D-I-E.com, promo code BRAINCANDY to get 15% off your first purchase. That's She's Birdie.com, promo code BRAINCANDY. Change of subject. <laughs> you, uh, this is basically like Sarah's episode of Things You Need to Watch also. But um, I'm trying to think. Do I? I probably have other stuff too. But um, you have to see the movie American Skin. I mean, oh, someone else everyone told me that. needs to see this movie. It is a homework assignment. We got a brainiac telling us to watch it. She works in law enforcement, but she's a woman of oh. color. Yes. And so she knows, she understands like both sides of like the police and the, you know, problems. Oh, I, well, there's a totally other kind of crying right there. I, I mean, this movie is one of the, it should win best picture. Wow. I don't see why. Oh, I'm going to go, I'm going to cry thinking about it. I don't see why it wouldn't. It forces, you know what? And I was telling Ren that. Ren, unfortunately, did not get to see the end of Promising Young Woman, even though I keep telling him he, we have to watch it again. <laughs> um, it does the same thing. Mm-hmm. It forces you, forces mm-hmm. you to look really hard at what is happening and not turn away and, mm-hmm. all, and give all sides of it and, and a different side that is a story that we see day in and day out, but don't really get to it, like emotionally experience we read it on in a mag, in a newspaper we we post something about it on instagram and then it's just like this thing out there and it's so we forget the emotion and oh yeah, and uh, like what i'm talking about is um uh i mean what do you even want to call this like systemic racism yeah. and police brutality and, you know, there's so many, it, co- it covers all of that. Mm-hmm. And pr- pr- racial profiling. Oh, he should win Best Actor for sure. 100%. It is so stinking good. So everybody should see it. And I told her, I was like, I really hope white people see this movie. 
like why everybody needs to see this movie. It needs, and I, I was like, is this one that? Because do you feel like Black Klansman was one that white people saw too? Mm-mm. What I thought they, I was telling that was what I used. It's like, well, I think a lot of white people saw that. Maybe you're right though. I don't know. I don't know either. But just, I, I, I don't know. I just that's really right. think that all of our listeners, just everybody, needs to see this movie and then tell their friends to see it and watch it with their families <clears throat> and have discussions about it and just it it gives all the talking points you know all, not like the from the like all of the other sides uh, like rebuttals and right you well, see why that does that doesn't work it's very mm. hard to get someone to see something they don't want to see yeah, well, this, oh, didn't we, if this isn't full circle. Right. I mean. This is that. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is the color blue. Because people that the I know blues. that kind of think this is all silly and what are you talking about? Everything's been fine since like the civil rights era or whatever. <sighs> I'm sick. It's very hard to present data that they will accept or even care about. Because they don't want to. Well, you know what? That's why this, that, ooh, yes. I'm glad you said that. Because that is why art, music, movies, this stuff, why it exists. Why we have to do it. Because we're not touching that, we're not reaching that side through data Mm -hmm. anymore. It's Mm -hmm. through emotion. You watch this, you you would be a soulless s- human being and a freaking sociopath to watch that and not be gutted like it's the human it's the human oh it makes my heart hurt mhm but people don't see that yeah the, the pain and the suffering and like that's what people need to see not data not numbers not this uh, this this argument this argument see the pain see the moms see the families oh it's so sad i can understand why people who are in the black community <clears throat> feel hopeless though because it does yes. feel like yes it's never going to change yes and it's 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 oh god so i just it's it's hard to mm-hmm. look at but this is that you have to you have to do it yeah and so we can oh i said i wasn't gonna cry in this episode I like or did i say cry. i was going to i don't remember you said but... you were feeling emotional before we started but i've oh. i i was saying that i'm glad when you cry because i think people are very raw right now yeah, yeah. and feeling all sorts of really painful things. And so you, when you reflect that, I think they feel seen. Oh, well, thank you. And it is, it is, you know, it, I talk to clients about this too. It's kind of like, you know, those days where you're having a, a bad day and then you stub your toe and it's just like yeah. the pain of that is just, and you just want to cry. We're all in that, that like, just one stub's toe away from, you know, <laughs> crying our eyes out all the, and we, it, it just is, that's what long-term stress and exposure to what we're dealing with. It, we're, mm-hmm. it, we're like, I, I mean, Ren and I talk about it all the time. Like we can't wait to see what the studies are going to say. It's uh, not good. Years from now <laughs> about what, like uh, just the, the overall general health of of all of us, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, it's not looking good. Not looking good. Um, I'm trying to think of if I even have news that <laughs> is looking good. <laughs> on, like, on my, I'm looking at my list. I mean, this actually is good news. And so it kind of links back to what we were saying about the baby stuff. Because maybe you don't want to get pregnant. Um, this was exciting, an update in the world of... Um, uh, uh, contraceptives. Ooh, okay. Yes. There is a new lubricant that has been developed, a new, it's kind of like a gel, that is considered this, like, breakthrough in the field of contraceptives. Where God. it it's the, what they call the triple threat. 
It prevents pregnancy. <laughs> well, a lube? Yep. Okay. Uh, get ready for this. Inhibits viruses mm. and increases libido. Wow. Amen. How is that possible? Right? And it has a higher contraceptive success rate than most things on the, like most gels on the market. And it like it's a, safer for intercourse. Is it like a spermicide? Is that even yes. a thing? So okay. the gel is, it's like a three part gel. Like there's three different things in it and the three different ingredients or I don't know, whatever the heck they are. I'm sure they have like fancy scientific names are designed to do like, and they're proven like FDA safe, which that was my question. I like when I was first thinking about this, I'm like, oh, that seems like anything that could kill sperm would really <laughs> affect the pH of a vagina. Absolutely. Right? So they like managed it. to do that and they somehow developed this gel that has the exact same pH as the vagina. So it makes it compatible and okay. it doesn't seem to damage any of the, <clears throat> the functions or any of, you know, anything that goes on with the woman. And it makes you horny. And it increases blood flow. It kept the, well, so this is the, my, cause you know, the study and all that, like the results are great, but I always <laughs> like how they do the, the studies and how, how on earth, because they can't do human trials with this stuff yeah. first. So that means we got to give little mice, little erections. No. And so they. Nothing makes us happier than mice right, doing things that humans do. <laughs> right. Mice in space. <laughs> mouse is, mice um, getting boners. Mice getting boners. So what they did is they put the gel on the fema- female mice on their little mice vaginas. Mice it's just vagina. crazy to me that these are jobs that there's right? somebody like has to go home and like, I just would love to be that person's therapist and process that. Just to like know what we, what things go on inside somebody's head when that's their job, like right? not sexual stuff, obviously because mm-hmm. that's weird. But just I would just want to know what if they're like science, 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 doing this for science. Like, is it weird or is it like they don't even think about it? It's I just because that would be it would be weird to me. Yeah, I, that's a good question because maybe it depends on the person. Yeah, because. Oh, well, this is a, well, related, but an aside, but Red and I were watching Shark Tank last night and there was this uh, guy who was coming on there to do, and I think this is freaking genius. Okay. It was a, it's a cup, like a little, like a urine sample cup that you'd pee mm-hmm. into. And then you close, you put a lid on it and you, the lid has these strips that measure different proteins and stuff in the urine that mm-hmm. can detect diseases and stuff that's off in your dog yeah that sounds so freaking genius right yeah you know what the the pushback they got from the sharks was what who's gonna want to stick their hand try how do you get the dog to Uh, pee in the cup oh you put your hand out there who's gonna want to do that i don't know any dog owner who ren and i looked at each other like do they have dogs yeah maybe they they don't like because i and then we, then we thought, wow, these are billionaires. Do they even clean up their own dog shit? If they oh. probably not, so they don't even do that. And so I would like to me that was like a no brainer. It was like if I have an elderly dog, and plus anybody who's had a child or a dog, and you've taken care of it, you know how many times we've had shit on us and like like yeah. been peed on. This is a part of be- this is right. Like, it's the you, same. You with take being care a of another thing. Yeah, yeah. It's the same. No yeah. big deal. You mm-hmm. just deal with it. And it's part of the deal. And just, I was just, it was crazy to me that they got pushed back for that. So like that I see as like no big deal. Or like, yeah, dog pee in this cup or whatever. So I'm thinking in connecting the two, maybe it's like that with these scientists who are like, yeah, I'm going to rub some freaking gel on the mice's mouse vagina so, or whatever. Yeah. Do you think that's what they do? They, or do you think yes, they, I know that's what they do. They say it. They use the their finger or what? Yeah. Oh, I did not, it did not say that. Okay, I wonder. That's an other really good question. Does it change it if it's the finger or if it's the... But is that just for us? And are these mice already just being like... I have questions. Anyways, so <laughs> what they do is they put it on the little mouse vagina. And they found out that they did this for 21 days. None of the mice got... Not a single mouse got pregnant. Wow. And their little mice boners... Lasted for twenty minutes, which seems kind of dangerous in a little mouse. Wonder what it usually is. I don't know if time is. is this. Yeah, I don't know either. It feels like that, like in human. I don't know if. 
I don't think time works the player. same as like, like <laughs> <laughs> what would mouse foreplay look like? <laughs> right, just like cheese, something with oh, cheese. That is, it is really funny those videos that people post on like TikTok or whatever of like where it look, it really does look like they've walked in on their animal pleasuring themselves. <laughs> And the cat looks up and is like, <gasps> like, looks like they've been caught. Have you seen these? No. You're like, what the hell are you watching on TikTok? <laughs> no, this, not, this is like, I've seen this. And there it was like a TikTok of this cat that That's was floating funny. around. And that was really funny. I had but, to wipe my cat's butthole yesterday with a wet wipe. Oh, why? It just stunk. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Well, yeah, because that makes sense. That's gross. Cat, yeah, that's like gro- yeah, cats are gross. I mean, let's face it. All, all, I mean, here's the thing. All things are gross. Yep. People. Humans. Yep. Disgust. All of us. And yep. there's nothing that's not, I mean, think of, we just like shed skin all the time. What the fuck is that? Yeah. Right. When you're dusting, that's just your oh. old uh, oh, bag of bones stop. there. Stop. We got bugs living in our eyes, eyebrows and shit. <laughs> And like parasites inside of us. Oh, speaking of parasites <laughs> inside of us, Susie, what? you were not fucking kidding <laughs> about how much I would love the show alone. Oh my God. How great is it? I'm obsessed. Obsessed. It like, is, I what watched, do you love about it? <sighs> like what's your favorite part I, about I it? love watching burly men break. Oh, yeah. I love it. I love watching these men who think that they're really tough Mm -hmm. have these real cathartic emotional releases where they have to look at themselves and they really just go through this this almost like forgiveness where they like get in touch with a different side of themselves and and it's like raw vulnerability in front of the camera and i just love that and also i just like want to see how they survive i can't wait for you to see my interview with barry because oh he was so, he was my favorite. Oh, that's why I asked him to do it because I was so enamored with him. It like his what a good spirit. Attitude. He has such a good spirit. He has such because he was playful. That's what I said to him. I oh, said see? I really I admired your ability to make fun and have playtime by yourself. Yes, that's oh, a real gift. He's probably a great dad. Oh my god! I could was, you imagine? I put it on Patreon and it's. Um, I put it open available to the public, even if you're not one of our patrons, because mm. I want people to see it. Yes. Oh my God. You're the best. Like I love he, that. Suze. He speaks about mental health and what happens to you out there, <sighs> how you get broken open, all the things you're describing. Oh, and who's more tough than a guy it. that survived the Arctic, but he can still acknowledge his rich interior life. Yes. Oh, I get goosebumps. It, that is it. It is so beautiful. And it's so... I, I feel like when you strip people down... It's kind of like Maslow's hierarchy That's needs what I said. We about. Ah, Susie! We are on the same page. I, well, that it's, it's just a, such a good show. Mm-hmm. And it's so... Oh, I love it. I feel like season one, we can you can just like toss out because like they were learning what they were. They were like working through the kinks and there were no men or no women. And I oh, didn't like any of that. I didn't know and, that. And it, it was a big switch to go from season six to season one. Because uh, season one, like it, it bugged me when it would say 10 men remain. And I'd just be like, uh, oh. every time I hated it. So I, I watched it, but I was just like, mm. and they were wusses. Really? Yeah, one guy quit the first night. <laughs> I wouldn't do that just out of right. Pride the fir- and no, I'm not kidding. I, like, spoiler alert: three of them are gone within the first four days. Oh, that's ridiculous. But I was like, P- these little wusses. It's come a long uh, way, then. Yeah, uh, t- well, yeah, I think the casting got better. Yeah, and that, yeah, we, I want to know where they find them. I asked him that, and he sent in a tape, but he said some of them are scouted. Oh, yeah, you know? I'd imagine, it seemed yeah. like these are kind of people that would need to be scouted. That's yeah, what I was telling Ren. I love it when my guesses yeah. <laughs> are the thing <laughs> that is correct. Love that. I love it because I told Ren, like, I'm going to, when you ask me a question, and it's, a, it's posed as a question, <laughs> it's like, like, hey, do you, what do you think about right? this? Right, you love it. I will give you... 
a hundred percent of the time what I think about that. Yes, you will. It does not mean it's correct, but I'm <laughs> going to tell you what I think, and I'm going to tell you in a way that is sounds like I. That's basically know what I'm our about. entire show. <laughs> I know. That is our entire show. So it worries me sometimes that I'm like, God, this, I don't, I don't know about this stuff years later. Like, well, it sure as hell was like that with the 2020 when I came in all optimistic and like, <laughs> right, right. Oh, every yeah, time you know. I hang out with friends, they're all, they always, and they listen to the podcast. <laughs> that is the first thing they say when I hang out. They're like, you were hilarious about what you said in 2020. Oh, no. How about how wrong you were about that? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I get it. We were wrong. Okay, yeah, let's move on. So, yeah, we can't always be right. Yeah, and like, I'm right a lot, so, you know. You really are. I'm- Sarah's whole personality is like, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> yes! Th- thank you, Susie. I am glad you <laughs> asked. You, but Susie. I, I want to share a... Vi- speaking of things that... <laughs> Uh, like gathering knowledge and asking questions. I want to share a very important thing that I learned in, and I kind of like, I already, I mean, it was a nice reminder. We'll put it that way. Okay. In my hunt for a house. Right. I, Susie. Yeah. <laughs> one of the places I got this feeling. I was like, mm-hmm. you know, I think I just need to hop on Megan's law. Oh my website. God, really? Yes. In California, there is there is a law called Megan's Law where you can put in an address and you can see how many registered sex offenders there are in your area, mm-hmm. as you should be allowed to do because that is dangerous. Yeah. And I got, I went to go see this open house and I got that feeling like, hmm. In a half a mile radius, there were eight. Oh. And I was like, that'll be a no. But then that wasn't really the <laughs> one that, that no. where I think the, and I straight up told them, I went to the open house and I like, as soon as I walked up, because I had an appointment and I was like, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm real sorry, but like, I, you know, I don't want to waste any of your time. It's going to be a no for me. And I'll tell you, here's why. Like, I don't know if you want to inform other people who are residents of this, which you do have to do, but. Um, uh, you have like eight within a half mile radius of here. And I think there's some like, I don't know, apartment complex or something that like allows oh. that. And do you and think that that's a high like, number or a typical number? Like if anyone were to do that? Well, I think it is, it, so it, it tends to be areas of concentration. Like they tend yeah. to be concentrated because of laws and zoning. limits and like zoning and mm-hmm. being within a school and stuff like that. Right. So I found, you know, I, I looked in uh, like where I live right now, it's like 25 to 30. Because oh, God. within like a, I think it's like three fourths of a mile radius because it's just so densely populated here. Yeah. And, you know. Yeah, and, it depends but, on that. The thing that was the real, like, where I felt like it was, like, an intervention from the universe, there was a house that Ren and I had already, like, the night before, I had submitted an application for, um, the night before I had, uh, you know, before doing this little research, I had, like, you know, told Ren, hey, can you, you know, finish, like, filling out that application, and he did, so this was a house that I was, like, you know, they're so few and far between. I was very excited to go see. And then after visiting this other house and like we had applied, like, a, like here is my application to right. like, you know, put us in the running. And after visiting this other house and having that thought in the back of my head, I was like, let me just check this address. Susie. Yeah. The next door neighbor. <gasps> Ew. The house next door. Nope. The house next door. That is not one, not two, but three counts Hmm. against children. Oh my god! We will not. And I was like, my stomach just like dropped. That I was like, oh my god! I want to just tell whoever. Like, I hope people know that they need to look this information up because, I mean, I don't care if it's the house of your dreams. Right. I mean, that to me is like protect your children, and that. I don't, I, I, that is one where I just don't think that there's a lot of, uh, um, um, like recidivism, the recidivism rate or whatever that's called. Yeah. Well, I was mm -hmm. thinking about that, Sarah, how not just with 
that particular um, problem. Population. Oh, yeah. yeah. But with, you know how we often talk about like anyone with a personality disorder and mm-hmm. how it's kind of like bad news bears because there isn't a it's lot fixed. that can be done unless the person is really interested in changing, yes, which they that, typically are go. not. Really interested in changing because I don't want people to be like, well, this person I know, da, da, da. Yeah, it can't. Sure. It absolutely it's in some cases, rare. but that's not the norm. And it's so, it's very frustrating for me because th- that's, I don't know how you get past that. If so, if you know somebody suffers with a personality mm-hmm. disorder, um, sociopathy, narcissism, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. What's the hope there? Not too much. Not too much. Setting good boundaries. <sighs> to not yeah. let yourself become a, a victim of that. I hope something I. E. happens. not living next door. <laughs> I hope something happens down the line where we learn some cures or something. Treatments, I should say. Mm. I know, I know, but maybe someday. Yeah. I mean... We can't but hope. Yeah. Oh, God, it just is so scary. So, yeah, so I definitely wanted to to give people that, you know, I don't want to, like, terrify people, but I do want people to be informed. And, yeah. it, like, because I just feel like... If I didn't know that Mm -hmm. and I signed a lease Mm -hmm. and I think about the difficulty I'm having getting out of a lease when there's a very Mm -hmm. serious problem, Mm -hmm. you know, saying I don't want to live next door because I don't feel safe with that person. I don't know if that qualifies. It's good that you check though and because that's so important to you. Yeah. And, but it is so disappointing. Yeah. But... Uh, it's good that we have those things out there and, and, you know, to be able to do that. And, you know, the good news is that the crime rates in the, the other areas and then the house I'm looking at this weekend is not at all next to anybody like well, we'll that. Cross and our fingers. Very low. So keep our fingers crossed. And let's, let's wind, wind it, it down, down. You know, <laughs> we like talked about impregnating little mice, little mice, <laughs> my, mouse boners, or not impregnating them, actually. The opposite, which hopefully can turn into a thing about humans using this and maybe can reduce the risk which is what the point i was trying to maybe one day get to a million subjects i talked about in this one but um maybe reducing uh you know fertility problems that come from hormone uh like you know or throwing people who have like reactions to birth control and things like that so maybe by using a sperm side or like something that's a gel we can reduce some of the side effects that women have to deal with from taking birth control i mean lube scientists are doing the lord's work they really are. And we learned that Sarah loves love a lot. Oh, I love love. And you should definitely watch Say I Do. And you should definitely, oh, and you have to see American Skin. Yeah, I love giving them homework. Yeah, it's great. Well, and Susie, every show you've ever recommended to me has been So far, amazing. so good. That's great. So far, so good. Oh I mean, God. we have the Great, great British Baking Show yeah. and uh, <laughs> Alone. And it's really like, what else do I need? That makes me happy. And then I always run it by my friend Sarah Cunningham, or Sarah Sagan, yeah. I guess. Shout out to Sarah. And um, whenever she tells me, oh my gosh, yes, I've already <laughs> seen it, every single one. In <laughs> fact, you need to start with this, and then you need to do And I'm like, oh yeah, it's some good yeah, shit. Yeah, she's, she's a documentary junkie too. Yes. She, she like, yeah, she's got the good like bar for what's good stuff. So, well, oh, what else? Yeah, we talked I mean, about love. We talked about that. That was the, you know, signs from the dead, that. Susie's oh, ghost. Yeah. Susie's ghost. A lot of activity. I'm going to show you the light thing because it happens all the time. Oh my God. Well, that's why you need to see episode four and five. I'm going to watch Signs from the dead because you will see the light stuff. And you'll be like, oh yeah, that looks familiar. I hope I can't wait. Maybe all these ghosts will. I I will. I'll do that for you. Ask her some questions or something. Okay. What she likes to do. Tell her to give you a sign because I was thinking knitting too. Well, she did knitting. Remember, that's oh, what that's Adam why. saw her she doing. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. So, what would she like? And maybe okay. like you put out a few things, oh my and like God. one of them is moved. I'm gonna do a ghost trap. Yes, Susie. Why? Are you, why have you not done any? I'm now sleeping I'm on the job. I'm sorry. I'm winding it up, and we're supposed to be cooling it down. I'm sorry. Whew. Yeah. Well, maybe all these ghosts will leave us five star reviews, and then. We'll be even, Steven. Yeah, and then you guys can in IRL, in the real world. <laughs> IRL. Yeah. All right, we'll see you next time. All right, bye. Bye. Did you know that everyone has an aura? 
Do you know what color your aura is? Maybe you have a fiery red personality or a quiet and calm blue or green. You could be an organized and methodical yellow or an explosive purple. Come join me, Mystic Michaela, on my podcast, Know Your Aura, to find out all about how your personality can be explained in colors. (laughs) 